Welcome to this worship service with DeSoto Presbyterian Church. We hope you will join us on YouTube every Sunday morning through the duration of this coronavirus emergency. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. The scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b through 49. Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written upon me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of those things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. Mighty God, in whom we know the power of redemption, you stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through every sorrow and trial of this life, uphold us with the knowledge of a final morning when, in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we shall share in his resurrection, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life and forever freed to be your people. Amen. Recently, I was discussing with my grandson uh, what has happened to his aunt who died. He was trying in his four-year-old brain to sort it out. So I tried to explain the permanence of death and finally, I resorted to the standard that church people use when talking to small children and said, Julie is living with Jesus. At which time my grandson stopped dead still in his tracks like a cartoon character, turned with his eyes wide and his jet dropped mouth wide open and said, wait. You mean Jesus died too? And in that split second, I thought, death, resurrection, ascension, return again. Four-year-old, no. And like every good grandparent, I deflected, look, Peppa Pig's on TV. There are things in this world that are simply hard to understand at four years old or 40 or 80. And Jesus knew this. He did not just pop in on the disciples after he died and say, hey guys, look, I'm not dead anymore, and then disappear. He didn't leave them to figure it out on their own. Our scripture tells us he came back and spent time with the disciples between his resurrection and ascension, teaching them and giving them direction. He helped them understand how the impossible was possible with God. Jesus had been risen from the dead to proclaim salvation for the whole world, beginning with Jerusalem. And the disciples were the beginning of that change. The whole world was offered the salvation that Christ brings from God. And living what he taught in everything they do and say, the disciples went out. Now, wouldn't that be something to see if the whole world chose to live like God tells us to? not just the disciples. We do not need to be told that the disciples had a massive challenge with the command to make disciples of the whole world. If we look around today at our history, we can see that the words of Christ have, been have not been embraced by the whole world. The world is full of hatred, greed, and every kind of sin we can think of. So what does that mean for us as Christians in this time and place? Is Christianity a failure because 2,000 years later, the disciples still have failed to convey his message to the known world? No, it simply means we are his disciples here and now. As such, it is our responsibility to carry on the work of the first disciples, the work that Jesus commanded. We are to take the word of God to the people of the world, all of the people, those in our own community and those around the globe. We are to do this in love. Our history of discipleship is spotted with dark times when we chose to accomplish our ends by unfortunate means. The Crusades come to mind first, where we sent out people to destroy those who were not Christians. 
So people either had to convert or die. That doesn't set very well with love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, who can forget the Inquisition? Heretics, people whose beliefs did not match exactly the church, were put to death. This is certainly one way to get conformity within the church. Meanwhile, in more recent history, some missionaries that were sent to take the good news to people of other lands were often bad news for the indigenous population. They demanded conversion at all costs. But Jesus tells the disciples to take the good news to the world. As disciples today, we must do that still. And we do it by loving our neighbor, by feeding the poor, by helping the immigrant, by helping prisoners become citizens that are responsible. We do it by reaching out into our community and helping where there is a need. We do it in the spirit of loving our neighbor as Christ called us to. What a sacred charge, what a gift has been given to us. It's been bestowed us, uh, on us by Christ himself. It's a responsibility, but it is a wonderful one. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, 
you have called us to follow in the ways of your risen Christ and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love, seeking to be true friend of all. We offer our prayers on behalf of the church and the world. Be with those who are suffering from illness in body or in spirit. Surround them with your healing love and give them peace. Be with those in positions of power and leadership. May they exercise wisdom and concern for the welfare of all people as they wield the power to affect lives. Be with the church as we navigate these uncharted waters. Give us courage to reach out to those in need as we can and to use this opportunity to recreate your church in your image. And together we pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Render no one evil for evil, but seek justice and walk humbly with your God. Amen. To send your tithes and offerings, the address is DeSoto Presbyterian Church, Post Office Box 548, DeSoto, Texas 75123. You can also find us on Facebook.com and our website, DeSotoPresbyterian.org. Please share this video with friends and neighbors.